Well, thank you. It's, it's been a wonderful evening, and I know uh, at least you aren't hungry waiting to eat now. I think I like this slot a little bit better than the other one. Uh, it's been a wonderful evening. Uh, great comradeship and companionship and great learning from each other, and I like the, the sense of the diversity that's in the room that was mentioned by one of the earlier speakers. Uh, I think that diversity is a strength, uh, it's a blessing, it's not a problem. Uh, and so I am so honored to be here with you, with the Muslims for Peace. I remember uh, when they were first getting going and I was speaking at one of their first gatherings and one of the things that struck me right away, uh, this was soon after 9-1-1, was that they represent, our sisters and brothers and Muslims for peace, the best single antidote to the stereotype that all Muslims are terrorists. I think this is a wonderful organization, a wonderful initiative to show that the heart of Islam, the heart of all the great world religions, and we've heard from a number of them across the spectrum tonight, I applaud that, the heart of these is peace. Peace in ourselves, peace among ourselves, peace in the world. This is a core value of all the great world religions. And so anybody who tries to say that that isn't the case, that some religion is all about hatred or violence or even terrorism, they really don't know what they're talking about. A lot of religions can get off track, including my own, Christianity. We have some shameful chapters in our history. Uh, in, including the Crusades. So we have a lot to be mindful of as we try to be faithful to the core tenets of authentic religion, which is always grounded in the love of God, as far as I'm concerned. I just wanted to share one text that kept going through my mind. I want to keep this brief. I know some of you have small children. You've got to get home and put them to bed, so I understand that. But this text is actually, we have a signed text throughout the three-year cycle, and the one for next week I was leading a Bible study on earlier this morning. It's from the 14th chapter of John, or the Gospel of John, and Jesus is having his last meal, the Last Supper, with his disciples, and it, it goes into, so Jesus has his last most important sayings. And in the 14th chapter, it says, Peace I leave with you. Jesus is speaking. Peace I leave with you, my own peace I give to you. I give to you not as the world gives it. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and neither let them be afraid. So let me just say a few things about that. That we're reminded, of course, that peace is a central value of Christianity, as it is of all the great world religions. It's a gift that comes from God. It can be mediated through the prophets, but it's a gift that ultimately comes to us from God. But think about that phrase, I do not give it to you as the world gives it. Now at the time of Jesus, there was another type of peace that was being promoted. It was the Pax Romana, the peace of Rome. And that peace was a peace that was enforced through military might and violence. This is what they considered to be peace. And there still are a lot of people in the world now who are saying the way to peace is to be threatening and to use force, to use military power, to build up bombs and missiles and all the other things that we're told are the source of, of peace. And Jesus is saying, I don't give that kind of peace. That's not the peace that I'm trying to give to you, my followers. Not the peace that I want to leave as my legacy. Instead, it is the Pax Christi, the peace of Christ, the peace of the love of God, the peace of mutual respect, the peace of see seeking to understand each other. And that brings me to the last part of that quote from Jesus. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and neither let them be afraid. 
If we let ourselves receive this peace, this gift from God, we won't have inner turmoil. We won't be troubled. We'll be in right relationship with God and with each other. But also, let's be mindful of that last thing Jesus said. And by the way, it was said repeatedly by him, by the angels, by the prophets, be not afraid. That phrase is repeated over and over, both through the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament, some people call it, and the New Testament. Be not afraid. Why? Why is that such an important tenet of authentic faith? It's because when we succumb to the power of fear, we are letting ourselves be divided. When people say, oh, let's be afraid of the immigrants, let's be afraid of the people who are different from us, who have different customs, who look different from us, then we are succumbing to an evil force if we let ourselves go there. Bad things happen when we act out of fear. And we've done that way too much. So this is a part of our call to peace across the whole faith spectrum. Be not afraid. Don't let yourself be controlled by fear. Look at your sister and brother and recognize there your neighbor, a person that God calls us to love and to stand in community with in whatever comes along. So those are just a few thoughts. God bless you, thank you, and let us stand together for peace and justice.